So we, in this lesson from the prophet Jeremiah, God indicates to the people through the prophet that they are in need of a disciplining in a sense that their stubborn wills, their desire to live life without God, live life by their own rules, follow their own ways in which they kind of, uh, in which they, the, the kind of idolatry serves as a way for them to, hey, well, let's get a little bit of, you know, let's get a little power from here. Let's get a little power from there. In a sense, they, again, I like to say the, the, the primary idols of, of power, achievement, or comfort, those are kind of, if you kind of, you know, group our idolatries into those groups, that, and it, that what the Lord says to the prophet Isaiah is like, fine, if you want to worship idols, why don't I just send you to the land of idols and see how you like life there? Why don't you go move to Babylon? I'll have them come and get you. And he says, I'll send them like fishermen to pull you out of the promised land into the land of idols. I'll send them like hunters that like went and it says, you know, I'll get you out, even out of the cleft of the rocks, like a hunter looking for like little uh, like uh, mountain goats or uh, rabbits up in the, you know, up in the clefts of rocks and trying to snare them. I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, they're going to come up onto this rock. They're going to climb this mountain of Jerusalem, Mount Zion, and they're going to pull you out and take you back to their land. And there you will discover what the worship of idols leads to. You will discover the quality of life afforded to you by the idols when they are in charge. But the Lord gives a word of promise that when you are full up, when you have had exactly enough of the worship of your idols, and of course, in back then they came by the names of Molech and the Baals and the Astartes and all those, all the the gods of the more powerful, impressive peoples around them: the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Assyrians, Hittites. But our gods, our idol gods, are again power, achievement, comfort. And when you are full up of the life that those idols have given you, when you are full up of death that is when I will bring you back to life. And I will bring you back to this land, having been taught who the true God is and the quality of life, the flourishing that actually I want for you. And you will discover that when I let you run all the way down to the end of that cul-de-sac. That's the hard word of the Lord because the Lord, in a sense, Lent comes with this word that the Lord loves us enough to honor our freedom and its consequences. He will let us run all the way down that cul-de-sac, follow that little rabbit trail all the way into the woods until it peters out and then we just discover we're just lost in the woods. But there is also a word of promise that comes to us during Lent through the prophet Jeremiah, which is that having been lost, God is in the business of finding finding lost things, finding lost people. And he will go into the depths of that wood. He will go down to the end of that cul-de-sac and bring us home again, where we can know his love again for the first time. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, when you tell this people all these words, and they say to you, why is the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? What is our iniquity? What is the sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Then you shall say to them, it is because your ancestors have forsaken me, says the Lord, and have gone after other gods and have served and worshiped them, and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. And because you behave worse than your ancestors, for here you are, every one of you, following your stubborn evil will, refusing to listen to me. Therefore, I will hurl you out of this land into a land that neither you nor your ancestors have known. And there you shall serve other gods day and night, for I will show you no favor. Therefore, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. But... As the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel up out of the lands of the north 
and out of the lands where he had driven them. For I will bring them back to their own land that I gave to their ancestors. I am now sending for many fishermen, says the Lord, and they shall catch them. And afterward I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and every hill and out of the clefts of the rocks. For my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my presence, nor is their iniquity concealed from my sight. And I will doubly repay their iniquity and their sin, because they have polluted my land with the carcasses of their detestable idols, and have filled my inheritance with their abominations. O Lord, my strength and my stronghold, my refuge in the day of trouble, to you shall the nations come from the ends of the earth and say, Our ancestors have inherited nothing but lies, worthless things in which there is no profit. Can mortals make for themselves gods? Such are no gods. Therefore, I am surely going to teach them. This time I am going to teach them my power and my might, that they shall know my name is the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.